Oh, wow, a dull and toothy Russian to the globe with sensational news. There's a German photographer from Stern Magazine uh, wants to photograph hippies smoking jillum hashish pipes uh, sitting on temple steps. Uh, and they're offering us all together like $20 for their help. Eddie strongly objects uh, to this uh, miserly payment and rallies his hippie children. Demand twenty dollars each and you get it. Well, uh, in the Globe, a uh, new person comes up, an American named Linda Shotputter, coming, uh, working her way back from the uh, Olympic Games in Japan this year. Eddie Wisecracks, he's never made it with a shot putter before. <laughs> and, uh, well, yeah, they turn Linda on uh, to her first join of Ganja and Hashish. While naughty Eddie continues to flirt with her, she unwittingly <laughs> bogards the whole joint, and uh, her head slowly slumps down to the Cafe Teddy. <laughs> oh, 1965, uh, Eddie dwells in a realm of uh, dreamy uh, exhilaration in the Himalayas for six weeks. And uh, therefore, the hip cafe society in Kathmandu becomes his stomping grounds every spring. <laughs> for the next 40 years? Hmm. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, Eddie becomes tougher in India and Nepal. He's sleeping in railway stations, uh, in parks, on sidewalks, and uh, in the tents Santa night uh, dormitory beds in humble travelers' crash pads. Uh, look, he was born in the Great Depression, and... Uh, when he first saw street life in Bombay, it reminded him of the mass poverty of his childhood. Impoverished people hanging out in doorways. <sighs> well, uh, from Kathmandu <laughs> to back to Copenhagen, mm -hmm. 8,000 kilometers. I just to get to Istanbul, uh, 5,000 miles. Uh, he religiously collects connoisseur hashish along the way. Nepali? Mm -hmm. Indian? Pakistani? Afghani. Ah, uh, yeah, and so he is an oriental sensation when he shows up in Copenhagen with these thick slabs of premier hash. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, he marvels again. Uh, uh, more sexually available Danish women than apartments. <laughs> so to rest up from his long uh, overland and first overland journey from India to Europe, uh, he shacks up with his former lover Mona. <laughs> Other hashy smokers hang out at her place. Uh, and uh, also some Danish musicians. Eddie sells them a couple of grams of hash to help them out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> the Mona, huh? She becomes emotionally draining. Well, Eddie leaves her and moves into the private room uh, in the home of his friends Mick and Joan. Blonde Joan? Gorgeous body? And she loves after Eddie. But Eddie plays it cool. I mean, he doesn't want to upset Mick. Uh, you know, it's a mellow situation because both Mick and Joan both work. Eddie has the flat to himself. Five days a week, ideal place to lie. Yeah. But his uh, shelter strategy short-lived when Jones seduces him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the bright turquoise bed cover lies Jones' white body. 
her <laughs> limbs outstretched to, <laughs> I want you to fuck me. Her hands under her head and smiling up at him. Wow, their bodies so tuned up. Four orgasms and quick <sighs> Wow, yeah, celebrity freak in Copenhagen. Well, uh, eventually Ed, Eddie runs out of his own sash, of imported hashish, uh, so he begins to score a few grams from Danish dealers, and uh, oh, Eddie witnesses these two dealers get busted by the police. Uh, he feels the heat. Travels to Sweden to stay with his uh, painter friend Gordon. Whew, getting too hot in Denmark.